And just give yourself a moment to find a comfortable seat on your mat. And you will want a blanket for your practice today. So if you have a blanket with you, you can bring it underneath your seat. Give yourself a little extra padding. And it's also nice to have a blanket if you have hard floors in your house to pad your knees, give them a little extra support. So a comfortable seat might be cross-legged or you might extend your legs straight out in front of you. You can also kneel on a pillow or two or if you have yoga blocks, you can sit up on your blocks. The whole point of this is just to find a comfortable seat and just to find a, a long spine. As you get settled in, just allow your gaze to soften on the floor in front of you. Maybe close your eyes if that's comfortable. And we'll begin by bringing in just a gentle rocking motion to the body, the upper body. Really slowly and gently swaying a little bit side to side. Bringing some sense of fluidity into your spine. Letting your jaw relax, letting your neck move. And as you're swaying side to side, just notice your breath. Not trying to force the breath, just allowing your breath to become a bit slower and a bit more full. And start to make your rocking motion a little bit smaller. So as if you're just making your way back to center little by little. Finding your way into that perfect midline, or you can sense that your hips are stacked or your shoulders are stacked over your hips and your spine is long. Slight tuck of your chin. As you breathe in, start to draw your shoulders up toward your ears. And as you exhale, relax your shoulders away from your ears. Find a few more like that, just going at your own pace. Doing your best to link this movement up with your breath. Inhale as you lift and engage the shoulders. Exhale, shoulders relax. Let's find one more. and just letting the shoulders rest. Relax your jaw, allow your lower teeth to separate from your upper teeth, and begin to draw your left ear down toward your shoulder. You can stay here if you'd like a little more. Tent your right fingertips onto your mat next to you. And there's a third option here, bringing that left arm up and around to your right ear. And if you can reach your ear, then you can give your ear a gentle little massage. Just gently pulling your ear, pulling your ear up, pulling it back, squeezing a little bit. We have a lot of the acupressure points in our ears, so giving a little ear massage can help relax the body. Notice if there's a certain place on your ear that really likes to be squeezed. Gently releasing the left hand down, bringing the right hand back to your lap and your head back to neutral. Start to soften your way to the other side, letting the right ear fall heavy toward the shoulder. And then you can choose if you want to add on the arms Tenting left fingertips, maybe bringing that right hand up and over and giving your left ear a little massage.
Releasing both hands back to your lap. Let's sweep the chin down toward the center of your chest. Just allowing your head to hang heavy in the center. Hands can stay resting on your thighs. If it's okay in your shoulders, bring your hands behind your back, interlacing your fingers. Draw your shoulders toward each other on your back and reach your fist down toward the floor behind you. Just lengthening the back of your neck. Lengthen your breath, puffing up your chest and upper back with your inhales. Relaxing your jaw as you exhale. Slowly release your hands back to your thighs if they're behind your back. Using an inhale, bring your head back up to neutral. And then just exhale as you settle back into this neutral seat, sensing your sits bones supported by the blanket underneath you. Just one note as we are practicing online and I can't really see you or offer adjustments during this practice. I'm going to offer some different options for some of the poses and I'm just trusting you to take care of your own body during this practice. So just finding the variations of each pose that really feel the best and the most comfortable and the safest for you. With your next inhale, reach your arms out and up. If it's available, join your palms above you, gaze to your thumbs. Exhale, trace the midline, pressing palms together, heart center. Find three more, syncing up with your breath. Inhale as you gather the air. Exhale as you ground and settle. Two more. From here, we'll start to find some moving side bends. So inhale, both arms reach up once again. As you exhale, bring your right hand down, reaching your left hand up and over, finding your side bend. And we'll move with our breath here, nice and slow. Big inhale, lifts you. As you exhale, come down to the other side. And just find your own rhythm here. You might be moving faster or slower than me. I just invite you to link up your movements with your own breath. Let's find one more round, completing on your left side. And exhaling, just settling in, reaching that right arm up and over. Inhale, both arms sweep up, gaze to the thumbs. Exhale, trace the midline. Now sitting cross-legged or legs extending out in front of you, we're jumping in a fold forward over the legs. So if your legs are crossed, you can bring your hands to the floor and just gently walk your hands forward. For our first forward fold of practice, just take it easy on your hips and your back, giving yourself a chance to pause when you just notice the first sensations of that stretch. Just breathing there. If your hands are on the floor, you can gently press palms into the ground to help send your sits bones and your tailbone back toward your neck, lengthening your low back.
And as you breathe in, make your way back up to seated. From seated, extend your right leg forward. I'm going to just switch how I'm seated on my mat so you can see me a little better. I'm going to reach the right leg forward, bend the left knee, and plant your left foot just on the ground, on the mat. Grab both hands around your left knee and hug that thigh in towards your belly. We're sitting up tall in our spine, gently drawing the shoulders back, gazing forward. Flexing your extended leg or flexing the foot on your extended leg. Now let's hold on to the left knee with your right hand and inhale your left hand to the ceiling. With your exhale, sweep your left hand down behind you and find a twist. Now you can keep your right hand on your left knee. If it's available, you can hook your forearm or elbow around that knee. Breathing as you move your gaze to your left. Find another long inhale and use your exhale to unwind your upper body. Let's bring the hands all the way over the other side. Just bring the fingertips down and find a gentle counter twist for your spine. Just a breath or two there. Coming back to seated, let's switch sides. So just extending that left leg now, planting your right foot. Draw your heel in as close as you're able to your seat. And beginning just holding the knee, lifting your heart, drawing your shoulders back and down. Bring some energy into your extended leg, flexing your foot, engaging your thigh. As you're ready, find your way into the twist, holding your knee with your left hand, inhaling your right arm. Exhale, reach that right arm out and behind you, tensing your fingers on the floor. Be gentle with your neck in your twist. Just keeping your chin aligned with the center of your chest. But you can allow your gaze to move all the way to the right. Finding one more in-breath in your twist. And using your exhale to unwind all the way through center. Let's find that counter twist, bringing fingertips down to your left. And gently wringing out your belly moving in the other direction. Coming back to neutral. From here, we'll make our transition into a tabletop position. So moving onto your hands and your knees. And if you are using a blanket to pad your knees, you might open it up and not have it really thick under your knees. If you have yoga blocks, feel free to bring them up and just bring them up to the front of your head so they're out of the way, but in your reach. Stack your shoulders over your wrists and your hips above your knees for table pose. Press the tops of your feet and your toenails down. Ground through your palms and your finger pads. We'll spend five breaths simply building some heat in our bodies, pressing down into the ground not using anything other than your own strength to push the floor away from you. Hugging your navel in, strengthening up your biceps, your thighs, firing up your breath a little bit. If you feel temperature rising,
One more long breath, still firing up all your muscles, just building some strength here. And then gently softening through the body. Let's find some cat cows. As you inhale, drop your belly, lift your gaze. Draw your shoulders back, reach your tailbone up toward the ceiling. With your exhale, draw your belly in and let that round your spine. Curl your tailbone under and tuck your chin. And then just move with your breath, nice and slow inhales as you arch. And exhales as you round. We'll find about four more breaths, long yoga breaths. If you'd like to circle or sway your hips or find some other organic movement here, you can feel free to just let your body explore some different movements. In your own time, you can make your way back into a child's pose, walking your knees out to the edges of your mat and bringing your big toes to touch behind you, pressing your hips back toward your heels or to your heels if that's available. Hands can walk forward a little bit, lengthening the sides of your body as you melt your heart, your forehead to the floor. If your hips are Lift it high up in the air in your child's pose, and that's just where they are today. You might bring a pillow or a block under your forehead so that your back doesn't have to strain. In your child's pose, you might gently lift your hands off the floor and just circle your wrists, giving a little wrist release after all of that table pose. Gently lift your gaze and make your way back up onto hands and knees. Walk your knees back under your hips. We'll find tabletop once again. From table, press down into your palms, firm up through your core, and let's send that left leg straight back, lifting the leg parallel to the floor, and flex your foot, toes aiming down toward the ground. As you breathe here, let's start to wake up that left foot and ankle, drawing some circles with your ankle, stretching out your toes. Move in the other direction. And then just letting your foot find stillness. Let's lift with the heel. Press the palms into the floor and start to lift your gaze toward the front of the room. So we're just building a little heat here. Four breaths, pressing that leg up toward the ceiling, reaching your heart forward and gazing forward. With an exhale, release that left knee back to the ground and just sway your hips side to side. Give yourself a little release there. We'll make our way to the other side from table, the right leg reaches back. 
Flexing your foot, aiming your toes down toward the ground. You might actually look back at your toes, make sure they're pointing down. That tells you that your hips are squared. And then start to draw circles through the right ankle. If your arms ever get a bit too tired in this position, you can always lower down into your forearms to give your wrists or your biceps a break. Let's circle your right ankle in the other direction. And then just flexing your foot, start to lift that leg a little higher, pressing palms into the floor, lift your heart and your gaze. Long breaths. With an exhale, let's release the right knee back to the ground and find another child's pose, bringing knees out wide, the toes together, rocking those hips back and down. Might be a great time for another wrist release, just lifting the hands up enough to circle through your wrists, making some fists. Moving in both directions with those circles. Lift your gaze, use your inhale to make your way back up onto hands and knees. And your choice, you can either find plank pose by stepping your feet back, strengthening up the body, lifting your knees. Or from table pose, just walk your knees back six to eight inches until you really have to engage your belly to keep your hips lifted. If I don't engage my belly here, I just kind of sink down. Okay, so we're really strengthening up through the core creating this long line from the crown of your head to your tailbone. From plank or knee plank, wherever you are, we're going to gently bend the elbows next to the ribs and lower all the way down onto the belly. So the tops of your feet are on the ground. You'll walk your hands forward, elbows coming underneath your shoulders, forearms parallel on your mat. Just planting the palms. Gently drawing your shoulders onto your back. And press down into your elbows and palms and start to lift your heart off the ground. So we're moving into our Sphinx pose and being mindful to keep the neck long, trying to gaze down the line of your nose. As you exhale, release your heart to the ground, slide your palms back beside your ribs. Inhale as you push yourself back up. Now you can feel free to stay in table pose today. This is a great option if you have anything going on in your shoulders. If your shoulders feel okay to take down or dog, then tuck your toes under. Start to lift your hips up and back. Pressing into the palms to send your hips high. Then start to send those heels down toward the ground. Feel free to walk out your downward dog, shifting your weight, finding any movement that you'd like just to loosen up your body. Maybe nodding, shaking your head, letting your tongue hang out for a moment. If you're still in your table pose, you can be finding some movement there, shifting your hips side to side. Circling your hips. From wherever you are, gaze forward to the front of your mat, and we'll all make our way up to the front. Wherever you are, just make your way to the front of the mat, find a forward fold. Feet at least hips width distance. 
Gentle bend in your knees. And just letting the upper body hang over the lower body. Now, if your hands are just floating in space here, then definitely take a bend in your knees to take that pressure off your back. And if you have blocks or a couch pillow or something, that might be nice to bring under your hands, just to let them rest onto something. From your forward fold, let your head release, your neck shake out a little bit. Hands can stay heavy, or if you prefer, find your ragdoll pose, taking hands into your elbow creases and letting your upper body sway and twist as you find some movement. Coming back to center, releasing hands down. Let's inhale into our flat back. So sliding your hands up either to your shins or for some of you it might be above your knees. We are just looking to take all of the curves out of the spine. So wherever you need to be here or here to lengthen from your tailbone to your crown. Hug your low ribs and your belly in, finding some strength in your core body. Let's find another full round of breath. Use your exhale to fold over your legs. Keeping your knees bent, start to gaze forward and use a long breath in to slowly rise, sweeping your arms out and up, breathing in as you come up. And exhale, we'll trace the midline again, bringing palms together at heart center and just softening the gaze in front of you. You can rest your thumbs into your sternum here, just gently pressing thumbs into the center of your chest. Checking that your feet are hips width or wider underneath you, creating a nice solid base for your body. Unlocking your knees, finding some fluidity, sinking your energy down to your legs, letting your tailbone be heavy. So I'll just spend a moment lifting up our toes, try to separate your toes and then lightly connect them again into the ground. We're really sinking into that connection you're making with the floor. Using an inhale, start to reach arms out and up. If you'd like, lift your gaze, find a gentle arch in your back. Then soften your knees, exhale as you hinge at your hips, diving down. Inhale to your flat back. And exhale to fold forward. Bending your knees, bring your hands either to the ground. If you have blocks, you can bring your hands onto your blocks. We're going to be working the left foot all the way back to the back of the mat and bring the left knee down. So we'll end up in this low lunge shape with the right foot forward. Making sure that your right knee is stacking above your ankle here for safety. If you have blocks, I love to bring them at the highest height. You can also use you know, some firm couch pillows as blocks or rolled up towels for home if you don't have yoke blocks. And if you don't have blocks at all, just come to tend to fingers, inviting your heart to lift a little bit your gaze to move forward. Now this is one of those poses I'll offer some options for, and this might be the perfect place for you to stay. If you feel the need to build some more heat in your body, start to engage your thighs and your abdomen, and start to float your upper body up, arms reaching up, biceps beside your ears. Now we'll settle the gaze in front of you or even above you. Relaxing the shoulders slightly, just finding a little broadening across your back. Palms turn toward each other. If you feel a little off balance, 
Try to press down through your, the ball of your right foot and your right big toe. As you continue to breathe here, you might find that you want to move a little deeper into the lunge, and that's fine. As you let your hips start to move forward, opening the hips, just make sure that your heart is lifting. So we're not just sinking, crunching into our back, lengthening through the spine. So you may stay where we were, or you might be starting to move more into this back bend. The hips opening, pressing forward, the heart lifting, the gaze reaching toward the ceiling. Still keeping some strength in your abdomen, even if you're back bending. As you exhale, begin to float your hands all the way back down, either to your blocks or to the ground, fingertips to the floor or hands on blocks. From here, let's tuck the back toes under, lift your back knee and really strengthen up through the back leg. So we're in this long lunge. Heart is trying to lift off that right thigh. It might not lift, but just moving in that direction and gazing forward. Now you can take as many steps as you want and work that back foot up to the front of the mat. So maybe one, two, three, four, five steps, maybe one big step. However you decide, just make your way forward, we'll fold over the legs. Long breath in, full breath out. Slight bend in your knees to take that pressure off the low, low back. Let's inhale, flat back. Just lift and lengthen. Exhale, fold forward, bending knees, bring your hands down. We're going to step the right foot back. I'm going to switch which side of the mat I'm on. Find that low lunge with your left foot forward. Same pose, second side. So you might have hands on blocks, framing that front foot, or just be on your fingertips. And just hanging out here for a moment, getting a feel for the shape in your hips, your body. Can you lift your gaze? And it have the intention of the heart lifting off that front thigh. It probably won't. Mine is very connected to my front thigh. But we're just lifting to help lengthen the spine and not sink all of our weight down onto the front leg. If you want to add on and lift the upper body, start to find that engagement in your core for balance and then lifting the upper body. Finding your way into lunge. When you come up, you might notice the shoulders want to creep right up in your ears in a big shrug. So try to soften the shoulders down. Maybe opening the arms a little wider can help you broaden across your back. And the same thing here. If you did so on the first side and you enjoyed moving a little more deeply into the pose, you can start to sink those hips forward, engaging your core as your heart lifts. Your next exhale starts to float your hands back down. Tenting fingers around your foot or bringing your hands to your blocks. Now we'll tuck the back toes under and lift the back knee. Finding that longer lunge and firing up your right thigh. Just as before, one or more steps, bringing that back foot up to the front of your mat and folding over both legs.
Let's inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold forward. Plant your hands and start to walk or step your feet back. Either plank pose with knees lifted, hips and shoulders at the same height, or bringing these down for a modified variation on your plank pose. We'll hold for four breaths, really strengthening up through the, uh, the biceps and the core. As you exhale, begin to lower, coming either all the way down or just halfway down if you're ready for that full vinyasa. Rolling over the toes, we'll slide the palms back next to the ribs. And inhale, finding a baby cobra. If you're ready for upward facing dog, you can feel free to take that. As you exhale, let's float the forehead down. Inhale, push yourself back up. Table pose, and either stay in table or tuck your toes under and find downward facing dog. Gaze forward, bend your knees if you're in down dog, and we'll all make our way up to the front of the mat, meeting in that forward fold. Softening knees, folding over both legs. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold again. Inhale, gaze forward and sweep your arms out and up. We'll reverse swan dive all the way up to stand. Exhale, hands to heart center. And again, just resting your thumbs against your sternum, and finding that equal standing pose in your body. So equal weight across both feet. You might notice here, if you're standing a little more in your toes, or maybe more in your heels. And you can play with a little rocking forward and back. Just being mindful, we don't lose our balance. Just feeling that weight shift a little bit. The front of the feet and the back of the feet. And then maybe you want to go side to side a little bit. Shifting weight onto your left foot and then your right. Just as we were swaying in our seats before, swaying gently side to side. Become aware of sensations in your legs and feet. We're bringing a lot of awareness into our legs. So we're gonna be moving into some power poses with our legs and some balancing poses. So we want to have our mind in our legs. Let's bring our hands to our hips. We're going to work that left foot back again and find a warrior one stance. So both feet are on the ground. The front knee is bending. Your, your right foot is in the front and your right toe is point forward. And the back toes are at a slight angle up to the left. A little bit of an angle there. Hands to hips so you can just wiggle your hips a bit and work them towards square. Let's all bring a hand to the abdomen, belly, and just engage as best you can, strengthening up all those nice abdomen muscles. You can stay here with hands on your hips, or if it's okay in your shoulders, start to reach arms up. Same as before in our lunge, letting the shoulders soften once the arms have lifted. Fix your gaze at a single point in front of you as you breathe here. If at any point you feel this is a bit too much, you can give yourself a break by just coming out of that bend in the front knee and then rebending the front knee when you're ready to join back in.
You might keep your arms lifted. That would be the most challenging way to transition here as we make our way into warrior three. For a bit of an easier transition, bring your hands onto your hips. First, start to just hinge your heart over your right thigh, keeping your spine long, just starting to shift our weight forward. You might step that back foot up a little bit, coming more and more onto your front foot. Eventually, we'll come to balance. Starting to float the back leg up behind you. At any point, your hands can come down onto blocks or fingertips to the floor, finding some support there. If your hands are on the floor or on your blocks, then you can play with maybe lifting one hand a little bit, and then the other hand a little bit, and maybe both hands. If both hands are floating, reach your arms behind you, starting to lift your heart, gazing forward. And just noticing, are you breathing as you're balancing? Can you bring a little smile to your face here? Just softening into the intensity. And gently starting to bend that front knee. We'll step the left foot down next to the right foot. We're gonna right away bend both of our knees, sink your hips back into that chair, and inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, hips sink a little more. One more inhale. Exhale, belly to thighs, let's fold over the legs and just release it off. Feel free to sway a little side to side or find your favorite forward fold. Coming back to center in your forward fold, let's all take a bend in our knees. Let head and arms hang heavy. And then feel your heels on the floor. And from the heels, you're going to gently start to press into the floor to roll little by little up to standing. Breathing as you come up, maybe taking two or three breaths to rise. And let your head be the last thing to come up. As your head comes up, you can do a little shoulder roll, opening your heart. And we're just back in our mountain pose, spinning the palms toward the front of the room, finding that equal standing posture in your body. I invite you to soften your gaze or close your eyes for a few rounds of breath here. As we just stand in stillness on both feet. And give yourself a chance just to tune your awareness inward and see how things have shifted since the beginning of your practice. Is there a bit more sensation? Can you sense more circulation or a pulsing from your heart, of your blood flowing? Does your breath feel a bit more full? If you notice there's some self-judgment coming in as you observe your own body, just invite you to notice that too. Oh, there's my self-judgment. Hello, self-judgment. That way we're not grasping and we're not pushing away either. Let's bring our hands back onto our hips. If your eyes are closed, start to flutter your eyelids open. We'll start to make our way into those power poses on the other side. So we're going to find warrior one. This time the left foot is forward. So working that right foot back, 
Now I have a pretty long stance, but you can really decide how long your stance is. Now you might just have a, a foot or two in between your feet, and that's great. The only thing about warrior one is we're just trying to bend that front knee and square our hips for the front of the room. So as with every pose, just make it work in your body. Fire up that back thigh, engage your abdomen, and then if it's all right, your shoulders, float those arms up towards the ceiling. Just settling into your breath. We'll prepare to transition to warrior three. Now just moving slowly can really help to keep your balance as you transition. So doing it in stages. Arms can stay up or bring hands to your hips. Engage your core and start to hinge your upper body forward, reaching your heart forward. Then perhaps take a little baby step or two up with that back foot. At any point that you're ready, transfer your weight onto your left leg. Start to float that right leg up and back behind you. Now your hands can come down to your blocks or the floor for some added balance here. Or they might float behind you, palms turning down, heart lifting. Finding one more inhale. Use your exhale to float your right foot down. This time let's just fold forward over both legs. Shift your weight, bend into each knee. Let your upper body sway a little bit. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold. Plant palms, walk or step feet back, plank pose, or bringing knees down, find your knee plank. Use your exhale to either bring your knees down and lower, or shift forward, lower halfway. Inhale into cobra, or rolling over your toes. Inhale to upward facing dog. And then as you exhale, We'll make our way back in either down dog or your table pose, whatever suits you. Find the full breath in through your nose and then sigh it out your mouth. Let's inhale right leg lifts up and back. You can do this from table or from down dog, wherever you are. From here, let's start to bend the right knee and try to open that right hip up a little bit. So sending your right knee up toward the ceiling, drawing your heel in towards your glutes. And then maybe find a couple circles with your right knee. And then straighten that leg square in your hips and release the right foot down. Gonna make our way into the other side, inhaling the left leg, sweeps up and back, bending the left knee and opening the hip. An option to draw circles. Your circles might be really little or they might be really large. Straightening your leg to square off, let's release down dog or table. And gently bring your knees down and find your child's pose. Untucking the toes, bringing your big toes together, walking your hands forward, lengthening your arms, and letting your forehead rest.
Inhale, gently make your way up to seated. We're gonna find some poses from seated now. If you'd like to have that blanket underneath you, then feel free to grab it again. Just set it at the back of your mat. Go ahead and sit down. Let's see, this time let's extend the right leg forward, bending your left knee, just like we started in that first twist, the left foot planted. I'm gonna give a few other options today for this pose. You can just stay right here if this worked well for you. Feel free also to cross that left foot over the right thigh. Just make sure your left big toe stays connected to the floor. And if it feels available in your body, then you might rock to your right, bend that right knee, bringing your right heel up to your left glute. So you're really sitting on both sits bones here, both knees are bent. And so any of those variations, you just decide what feels most natural in your body. And we'll start again simply by holding the left knee, lifting the heart and drawing the shoulders down your back. So just breathing as you feel just a sense of containing your body, giving your knee a big squeeze. And we'll find our twist. So either right hand to your knee, if it's available, hook your right elbow around your knee. Inhale, left arm reaches up. Exhale, left fingertips tent behind you. And just find your twist, five breaths. Let's gently in, exhale, make your way back to neutral. If both legs are bent, you have to lean to the right again to extend that right leg. You're gonna stay on this left leg, keep working on that left leg. This time, hit the sole of your left foot and bring it anywhere on the inside of your right thigh. So we're kind of letting that left knee open up to the side here. You can bring your fingertips behind you, tensing them there, helping to take any curves out of your low back. So sitting up tall. This might feel like plenty, and you can just hang out right here and breathe into that stretch. If you have further to go, just try to keep your back long as you start to reach your heart forward. Hands can hold on somewhere onto your leg, or if it's within reach, holding onto your foot. And gently drawing your upper body forward over your leg. Again, allowing your breath to slow without forcing your breath. Just noticing if the inhale can get a little bit longer, your exhale can lengthen. Taking your time, make your way back up to seated. Be gentle with your left knee as you lift that leg, extend it forward. Just let your hands come behind you. Oops. I'm gonna rest back on our hands for a moment and just let the legs flop. And just flop in your legs, flop in your feet. And then stopping that flopping, <laughs> let's start to tap the back of our knees on the ground. This is really good to just get some of that lymphatic fluid moving back the legs, the thighs, back of the knees. And then when you're ready, we'll make our way to 
those same poses on the other side. So we have our right leg extended. Now we're going to keep the left leg extended. Bend your right knee and plant your right foot. Preparing for that twist, you might remember we have a few different options here. So you can keep your foot right where it is on the inside of your thigh. You can cross the foot over your left thigh. And if it's okay in your hips, shift to your left, bend that left knee, and bring your left heel up next to your right hip. So both knees can be bent. Wrap your hands around your front knee and hug your right thigh in toward your chest as you sit up tall, drawing shoulders down your back. And keeping hold of your right knee with your left hand or your forearm or elbow. Let's inhale, right arm reaches up. Exhale, float the fingertips down behind you, tenting them on the ground. And just settle into your twist as you find your breath. Using an exhale, let's gently start to unwind upper body. And unwinding your legs, straightening out the left leg that's bent. Be gentle with your right knee as you reposition the legs. So we're going to bring the sole of the right foot somewhere on the inside of the left thigh. I forgot to mention this on the first side, but hips are tight here. This thigh might be really lifted. And you can bring a block or a rolled up blanket or pillow or something underneath that thigh just to offer your body a bit more support. And your body really responds well to being supported. So I encourage the use of props like that. Let's bring our fingertips behind us, creating that length in the low back. Flex your left foot. Stay right where you are, or if you have more room to go, hinge your heart forward, walk your hands forward, and take hold of your leg or your foot anywhere. You can work with your breath if you're folded forward here, using your inhales to create a little more length in your spine, and your exhales to fold and deepen into the stretch. Just subtle movements, right? Inhales, a little lift to the heart. Exhales, slightly deeper settling. Begin to make your way back up to neutral, walking your hands up your leg. And then use your hands to lift that right knee up, extend your right leg. And just as we did before, bringing your hands to rest on the ground behind you. And let's just let the feet and the legs flop a bit side to side. Just loosening up through our joints. Finding a little playfulness, maybe with your legs and feet. Giving them a few little taps if you like that. All right. Now, before we make our way down onto our backs, I'm going to invite you to actually come off your blanket if you're sitting on it. And you're going to make a long roll with your blanket. The only 
rule about this is it needs to be at least as long as your back body. So from your tailbone to the crown of your head. So about that long for most of us. You're gonna just roll it up. If you have tassels or knots on your blanket like I do, then put them up away from you. And you're gonna just bring that blanket into the middle of your mat once it's in a nice long cis roll. Once you have that set up, you sit yourself down on your mat. We're not sitting on the blanket, we're actually sitting on the mat. And then you're gonna scoop yourself right up against the edge of the blanket, keeping your knees bent. So slowly starting to lower down, you want the blanket to support your spine. So lying all the way around the middle of your back and supporting the back of your head. And your arms can just rest beside you. Now the most supportive for your low back is to keep your knees bent in this pose. You can even walk your feet out a little bit to the edges of your mat and knock your thighs together. And that's gonna be really supportive and help your low back open up. There are some other options for different bodies. Right, legs can extend out. You can take up a lot of space, lengthening. Or you might join the soles of your feet together and find some hip opening here. Long breath in and sigh it out, just releasing some heat and tension. Feeling where that blanket is supporting your back and helping to open up the chest, the front of your body. If anyone would like an option for even more back bending here, you can reach your arms overhead and hold opposite elbows. That's going to lengthen the sides of your body and maybe create more of an arch in your back. Starting to let go of effort as we are nearing the end of our practice. Noticing how it feels in your body to start to relax and settle onto the floor. We'll be here for another minute or two. So if you do want to choose a different variation for your legs or arms, you might explore something different. Observe your breath. This is a heart opening position. Notice how much your breath can fill up your chest and your heart space. Breathing in and out from your heart space. If your legs are extended or in butterfly pose, let's bring your knees back up, plant your feet on the ground. With bent knees, 
Let's all slowly roll ourselves off the blankets, either side. Just gonna let your body gently roll to the ground. And then reach behind you and just push your blanket out of the way. And come onto your back with knees still bent. So now we're just gonna lie on our backs with knees bent directly on the mat and just feel how that's different in your body. You might let your thighs knock together, your feet separated. And just get a sense of that firm support under your back and shoulders. Gently draw both knees into your chest. Catch the front of your knees or shins with your hands and then gently draw your knees out wide and start to rock side to side. Find a self massage across your low back, your hips. You might let your head rock a little side to side. Finding some gentle moving twists. And start to come back to neutral on your back. Let's hug those knees into the chest. A few options, keep head and shoulders down if that's the safest in your neck. If it's okay in your body, lift your head and shoulders. Wrap your arms around your shins. You might be able to reach, some of you may have this available, flexing feet and just reaching for the opposite sides, the outsides of your feet with each hand. So my arms are crossed, really giving myself a good squeeze. And then hugging everything in towards the middle. See how big of a hug you can give yourself today. And just taking another breath. See if you can enjoy that self-hug a little bit. Give yourself a big squeeze. And let's all make our way into Shavasana, so the resting pose. The traditional Shavasana, we're lying flat on our backs, legs extended, arms extended. If you feel any discomfort in your low back here, then I would recommend bending your knees instead and walking your feet out to the edges of your mat, letting your thighs knock together. Let's all take a moment, walk your shoulders down away from your ears. Just really giving your neck some length. Find a little tuck of your chin. Soften your gaze toward the ceiling or just let your eyes softly close. As you rest in Shavasana, invite a long and slow breath in through your nose. And one more time, sigh it out of your mouth. And then, just let go of any control over your breathing that you've been practicing. Letting your body breathe itself as it has since the day you were born. And gently draw your awareness to those places your body is supported by your mat and the floor. Just resting your attention in that place of grounding under your heels, under the backs of your legs, under your glutes, beneath your back and shoulders. Under your arms and hands.
and behind your head. Noticing all those places at once where you're connected to the ground. And then gently shift your awareness to notice the space surrounding you. Can you notice the place where the front of your body ends and the space begins. You might notice a sense of temperature of the air in your room, or maybe the texture of your shirt. We're just getting a sense of that space surrounding you. And then letting go of all effort for our final few minutes in our resting pose, just allowing total relaxation of mind and body. Begin to draw your awareness back into your body. Finding a deeper breath. Before moving your body, just notice how it is to be relaxed. Taking a moment to let every cell of your body just drink in any amount of relaxation that you might be experiencing. And as you feel ready, begin to make small movements, wiggling your toes, running your thumbs across your fingertips. Draw some circles with your wrists and your ankles. Gently let your head rock side to side on your mat.
If you'd like a long stretch today, you can extend your arms overhead, reach your legs long. And give yourself a big stretch, just like it's your first time getting out of bed this morning. And taking your time, you can roll yourself over onto your favorite side. Just allow your body to rest on your side. Knees can draw up closer to your chest. Keeping your eyes closed or your gaze soft. Slowly press yourself back up and find any comfortable seat on your mat. Take your time to create your final seat to be a comfortable one. If you need a blanket or a block under you, just take the time to make that happen. As you come to seated, find length up and down your spine. If you'd like, turn your palms together at heart center. Maybe lowering your chin forward, just sending yourself a big wave of gratitude for taking the time out of your day to do something really lovely for your body and mind. To do something really good for your immune system and your health. And I hope you'll all accept my gratitude as well. Thank you so much for joining today. I bow to you. Namaste.